Hi. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about Python coding in Maya. And specifically, I'm going to show you how you can create a bunch of definitions with variables, local variables, that you can pass between them, and then how to create an interface using PySide for those scripts. So this is something that I had a hard time figuring out. I had to piece together information from a lot of different sources to put this together, and so I thought that it would make for a good lesson. So I'm writing my code using PyCharm and Community Edition, which is a really good code editor that a friend at work uh, put me on to. So I'll also make these scripts available on GitHub so you can download it for yourself. But what I've done is I put together a little script that has a few just kind of sample definitions and it has all the code that you need to create a PySide uh, interface. And so this is for Maya 2017. So that uses PySide 2, which comes with Maya. And so it's a little different than uh, previous versions of Maya. Similar, but there are a few things that are different in terms of the code. So just bear that in mind. This is for Maya 2017. So I would encourage you to download this code from my GitHub so that you can kind of follow along. But I'm just going to kind of run down the code and just kind of talk briefly about what's in here. So up at the top, you, I have a few import statements. So just bringing in commands, Maya commands, Maya mel commands, and pymel. Uh, you don't always have to do that. I mean, really, the first line is the one that you really need. And then if you're using code from uh, Maya mel or pymel, then you would include these others as well. So right at the top, I'm creating a class. So you would name this whatever it is that this tool does. So let's say you're making an auto rigger. So you might call it class auto rigger. And the very first definition in some other programming languages, you'd call it a function. So the first definition has two underscores in it and then two underscores. And you'll notice that each of these definitions are going to have self in them. And so what that does is allow you to access all the variables that I'm initializing here. So these are the variables that are going to be passed between different definitions or different tools in the script. So any variables that you don't want to create as globals, which it's better not to use global variables unless you have a good reason. So local variables should all be defined in here. Now you can see that two of these I've defined with actual values and one of them, variable c, is equal to none. So you can create empty variables that can then be defined in other definitions. But just by having them here, you'll be able to access them in these other definitions below. And so the way that you'll name these variables, you'll always put self dot and then the name of the variable. So if, you, I, was, if I just wrote variable A, that would be a completely different variable. So after that, I created two more definitions. The first one I just called it definition A. And again, the variable I'm passing to it is self, so that it reads in these variables that I've declared in the init. And so in this definition, I just wrote something very simple. I just wrote, so here where we have self dot variable C is equal to none, in definition A, I'm redefining self dot variable C, and it's equal to self dot variable a plus self dot variable b. So I'm taking these first two variables, adding them together, and defining this third variable. And since I defined it up here as none, it's 
still going to get passed to this third definition where definition B, I have self being passed as the first variable. And then after that, I have another variable called username. Now this variable isn't being used by any other functions or any other definitions. So I don't have to define it within it. So this is a, a variable that a user uh, kind of running this definition can supply the value for. So in here, I just have an if statement. So if self dot variable C uh, is equal to none, so equal equals none, then return. So that's a good way of just exiting your script right at that point. So this is a very easy way. You just have an if statement and then return and it won't even go through the, the rest of the code. So this is a very simple example but this is something that becomes even more important and useful to be able to quickly stop your code from running uh, if certain variables aren't defined or if certain circumstances don't exist. So if variable C is defined then I'm gonna print hi plus the username which is gonna be whatever value the user supplies to this definition. Thanks for visiting and then the next line will print variable C is equal to and then it's converting self dot variable C in these parentheses to a string. So it's very simple. Alright now let's go over the actual interface part of it or the GUI. So here's a line where I'm defining this class so CN is equal to class name so you would write you know it could be your uh, auto rigger or whatever it is you're creating but I'm simply taking the name of the class that I used here class name I use very generic names so that you can kinda use this as a template and just use it as a starting point to write your own scripts so now I'm, I'm putting that class into a variable called CN so just a short form of this the point of that is by accessing this variable CN, I'm creating an instance of this tool, this tool that contains all of these definitions. So that might make a little more sense as we move forward. So here I've just commented out um, some learning resources, some PySide docs. So PySide is what we're using to create this interface. So I can't really tell you what all of this means, but this is the basic code that you need to create your PySide GUI. So PySide 2, you're importing um, some code from there for uh, Qt GUI, Qt widgets, and then partial. I'll show you what these things are used for. And then there's additional um, like code being imported from OpenMaya and then you import Shibokan 2 and then the first definition here is get Maya window so a lot of this code I mean you can just copy it the way that it is but uh, it's just bringing the data that you need together to be able to create buttons and create an interface so that a user can then use these definitions that were defined above so we have all of these we have windows uh, code for checking to see if the windows already open when the code is run so it'll close that window and then uh, reopen it if you run the code again and so this is just some more code I think for creating windows and just kind of keeping track of all of that and we have some code for the look of the font that's going to be used in these buttons and then we create a widget over here so all of this code just copy and paste it and use it as is and then we're going to create a layout so this is the code that I would change is for creating buttons so I've kept it pretty simple you have button equal to and you can copy this part of the code but here you'll put 
the text that goes on the button. So, you know, it might say click here. In this case, the first definition, uh, definition A, is basically adding A plus B. So I just, on that button, I'm just going to have a string that says A plus B. And then we set the font, we set the minimum size, the maximum size, and we set the style in terms of the color of the button and the text that goes on it. And then when the button is clicked, then we're going to run from CN, which is the instance of this class that we created that contains all these definitions. So class name, definition A. So what this is saying is take the definition that we named definition A from CN, which is the class that it is under. And then why do we have partial over here? So this was a command that I found that allows me to pass additional variables to my functions. So in this case, I'm not passing any variables. You don't have to put self in here. It's already understood. But I still used partial just to keep it the same as the other lines. So if you look at the next button, you'll see that this one I called it print C because it prints the value of C. And here, partial is used so that I can pass that username variable to definition B. And I'll call that username Adnan. So I just put a string there. But you'll notice that the way that this is formatted, so you have CN, like the class, dot, and then the name of the definition, and then there's a comma, and you would put each of the other variable values in here with commas, as opposed to putting them in parentheses after the name of the definition. So that's a little bit different. And then at the end here, we just have a close button button, so we can close this window. And we have just a window show uh, command that just takes all of this and actually creates the window. So let's just copy all of this code and run it. So just in Maya, I'm in a Python tab here. And I can just paste all of that. And there we go. So here's that simple uh, interface that was created with those definitions in th from this class. So I'll click on A plus B and then print C and if you look here it says hi Adnan thanks for visiting variable C is equal to 3. So it added the values of A and B. So this is just a very simple example uh, it took me a while to figure out how I could pass variables between definitions without just creating global variables. It took me a while to figure out how to wrap all of that in a simple interface with buttons. I'm not an expert on Python, but I do create a lot of tools that I use in production, and so this is very important for me, and hopefully it was useful for you as well. Feel free to ask questions, and I'll answer as best as I can. And thanks for watching.